Welcome fellow YouTubers out there and Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, this is going to be kind of like a wrap up of uh, the last year. I know a lot of people have been doing that. Um, Jersey Knife Guy, as you notice, I have done a little bit of decorating on the uh, stand for the Christmas season. Um, hope you appreciate it. And... Um, well, it's been a busy day, and I'm basically taking a break from everything that I've been working on. I'm sure everyone else is out there very busy, too. Uh, so I don't know how many people will actually be able to tune in and watch this. That's okay. Uh, but I do want to wish everyone out there a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year, a very healthful New Year. Hope uh, everything comes true for you in the New Year. And I hope uh, this is a very special Christmas for everyone out there. Um, hi, Chris. Uh, what I thought I would do is talk. A lot of people are doing uh, five uh, knives. There are five best knives, five best budget knives, and all these other things. Um, and I thought what I would do, well, as you can tell, there's a lot of Swiss Army knives in front of you. So I'm going to be talking about... Uh, five Swiss Army knives eventually, but what I first wanted to do is go over five knives that I got this year that I thought I would not be able to get. Um, and, um, you know, just talk a little bit about them. I've done videos on most of these. Um, and I'm gonna start out with one that's kind of weird. This is known as a fish priest. I saw this a couple years back and was always trying to get a hold of one. It's nothing special. It's just a little fish knock or something you hit a fish on the head with, uh, put it out of its misery. But it's got a little blade on the inside, so it is a knife also. And uh, just thought it was cool. It was one of those weird oddities that I like to find. I like different fishing tackle and stuff, so uh, had to go and I've been looking for one for a long time and I managed to find one. So. That was uh, something good in uh, 2019. I think 2019 was very good to me on a number of occasions and for a number of reasons. But uh, I'm going to just focus on knives in this portion because, well, this is a knife channel. And the fish priest, though, not something everyone would be looking out there for as uh, somebody who likes to go fishing and somebody who likes uh, to buy oddities and somebody who likes historical things. Um, this was just one of those things that I had to have and it was pretty cool and I got it for a really low price so the fish priest uh, it's one of those things that uh, I got a feeling no one else is gonna say is one of the coolest knives they got this year but this is one of the coolest knives I got this year uh, another one well everyone knows toothpicks and uh, I finally got myself a large uh, uh, toothpick by case and this one is in the mediterranean blue bone most of the things like i'm talking about here they there is a video on them and i will link them in the description below um and so here was one of my knives that i got this year that you know it says a lot you know i i got one you know i finally got that large toothpick by case and i didn't have to um uh, rob a bank to do it so Again, you know, it's one of those things, if you're patient enough, you will get what you're looking for. And, um, you know, just take your time and uh, eventually things will work out. And that's what happened this year with uh, several things like the large toothpick. Another one that uh, I got that I thought I would never get is uh, a very early Boy Scout knife. This is the second pattern that came out. So this dates from like 1917 and 1924 it's a hammer brand uh, back when it was part of the New York knife company and this thing is in just fantastic shape yeah it's got a very strong back spring as you can tell the uh, short cap lifter screwdriver the old style can opener with a half stop um, does hit the blade a little bit when I'm closing you got the uh, patented uh, uh, punch blade and then a master blade that I would say is about 70 to 80 percent full but you got to remember the knife is 100 years old so I don't know pretty good shape 
really good be prepared shield on there. You got to remember also the early Boy Scout knives did not have a Boy Scout shield on it. It had the Boy Scout logo, be prepared. Like I said, all of these have uh, uh, videos on them. And this one recently showed up, uh, the USAF uh, utility knife, like I mentioned in the video. This is not one that was actually issued to people in the Air Force, but it was sold to folks in the Air Force. So um, my dad was a lifer in the Air Force, got a son-in-law who's a pilot in the Air Force. So the Air Force is near and dear to me, even though I was in the Army. Um, but, you know, kind of a cool knife. And this one is in mint condition. It came, still got the box for it. It's just a box. It still got the box for it, too. So, you know, that was pretty cool. And then the knife that I never thought I would buy, but I bought and fell in love with, the uh, the Spyderco Dragonfly 2. Um, and I carry this thing all the time. I've been carrying it for six months now. I never thought I would buy a Spider Co. Um, and I never really thought I would carry one, but you know, this is uh, <laughs> this is my EDC. I will be carrying it today, just like uh, every other day. Um, but it's gonna have a, a special partner going along with it today because this is Christmas Eve. And so, you know, everyone likes to break out special knives for special occasions. Um, I don't have a special Christmas knife, but I have a knife that I do like to carry on um, Christmas or Christmas Eve. I used to carry it every day. I carried it for a good 18, 20 years. And it's this one right here. It's just an old Victorinox Woodsman. Now the Woodsman is a similar knife to the, uh, to a, uh, Huntsman, except it lacks a toothpick and tweezers. As you can tell, this knife is kind of beat up. I could easily change the scales, but that's one of those things you don't want to do when the knife has a lot of sentimental value to it. And this is a knife that my wife bought for me way back in uh, 1984, 85, one of those times, uh, probably 85. I was just, yeah, 85, I believe, is when she got it for me. And, um, you know, it's still in fairly decent shape. Everything works on it. The uh, scissors are still just as crappy as they always were. Anyone who knows uh, the old Victorinox scissors knows that the uh, sometimes the spring breaks. This one, the spring broke. I, I kind of fixed it up a little bit. But the real problem is, is that screw always loosens up, so you always have to tighten it up. Uh, but a little Loctite, and it worked pretty well. The thing is, is this is a knife that my wife bought me. Um, and when she bought it for me, this was probably a knife, even though it was only about 17 or $18 at the time, that was 17 or $18 that we probably could have spent on something better than what we are, than, you know, a Swiss Army knife for Christmas. But she bought it for me for Christmas. She knew I wanted it. And so, that makes it uh, very special. You know, it was when times were tight, times of money was tight and everything else, but I still got something like this for Christmas. So that's, you know, half the battle of, a, of a collecting knives is some things are just sentimental and you, you just really, uh, you know, if I try to sell this knife, it's gonna be worth, in the shape it's in, eight ten dollars i mean it's not in the world's greatest shape i mean but the sentimental value of it kind of makes it priceless so this is one of those knives that i protect a lot and this is the kind of knife i break out on special occasions um anyway let's get on to something a little more upbeat and that's um looking at uh five swiss army knives that i got this year that uh, are my favorites for the year. Um, and as you notice, there's more than five out here because what's the point of uh, just showing the five when I can show you some of the runner-ups? And uh, and that's what I'm gonna be doing is showing some of the runner-ups and I'll tell you why the runner-ups. First two up here are by Wenger. Now this is something that's really cool. I like this knife. Uh, it is the... Uh, the pocket toolbox and this knife um, I have all around all, all here all the time and it's because of this right here this is one of the coolest 
the tools on a Swiss Army knife and that is a screwdriver for your eyeglasses. Anyone who wears eyeglasses knows how nice it is to have that little screwdriver. Um, and <laughs> it's not a, a winner, but this is definitely a runner up and I, I just got it this year and I, I love this knife. It's a terrific knife. Yeah, if you can get a hold of one of these things or any, uh, uh, they also have the Opti tool. If you can find an old banger with the Opti tool on it, get it. I mean, it's so cool to have that little eyeglass screwdriver on there. Um, it's got all the other blades that you would expect on it. You know, you've got your uh, cutting blade, your file, and then on the uh, other side, well, there's that. You got whatever this thing is. Um, looks like a sewing needle. And you got a pair of scissors over here too. And somewhere on here, yeah. The uh, other screwdriver tip and bottle opener. And obviously the cap lifter, and, I'm sorry, the, uh, the tweezers and um, uh, see. Uh, brain freeze because the phone rang. Any case, the next knife over is a classic 07 and nothing special about this one. Sorry about that brain freeze. It happens. Uh, the classic 07 here and it has one of those dog leg can openers that I'm afraid to use, but I always wanted one. Now I've got one. Uh, this came from a good friend of mine, Steve Hanner. Uh, he gave it to me, uh, sent it to the mail along with a couple other knives, which were pretty cool. It's got the nail file. Basically, it's uh, like a uh, Victorinox Spartan, except it's got a nail file and that really funky screwdriver. And as you can tell, this is an older one. I think it's from the 1960s or so. Um, just a cool knife. Uh, obviously, like I said, it's not one of my uh, top five but we'll get to the top fives. Um, you would think right away that this is going to be a top five. This is my first uh, soldier knife, and it is from 1951. I believe it's 51. Oh, no, I'm wrong. In 1942. Um, the only problem, the reason this is not in my uh, top five is mainly because of the condition of the main blade. But got it for a steal. It was a really low price, so I picked it up. One of these days, I'll get a, a real uh, a, a soldier's knife with a better blade on it. One of the earlier 51 pattern, something 1951 or before. Um, everything on it works fine. The only problem is, is the uh, blade has been changed. Got a video on this one also. I don't think I have a link to it. But I did have one of the modern soldier knives. Now, this looks like a Pioneer. The reason it's a soldier's knife instead of a Pioneer is if you notice, there is no, uh, uh, there's no, whatever it's called, the uh, key ring. There's no key ring on it. Man, am I tired. Um, but otherwise, it's the same blade. Your cap lifter, that's not the cap lifter, that's the can opener. That's the cap lifter screwdriver. You know, and your uh, your punch and your main blade. And this one is dated 1999. I could pretend it's from 1966, but who who would I be kidding? Everyone knows it's 1999. But this is uh, one of the uh, last of the uh, soldier knives. It was done after they uh, required a proof mark on it. So I need to get a better one of these too. So I don't think that one quite falls into the uh, top five, but it's pretty cool. One of them that does fall into the top five, though, is back here, and that's the uh, Kaza Messer. Um, this is the earlier cheese knife. I've got a video on it, and uh, it's got the cheese blade on there, as you can tell. And it's got a main blade that is serrated, and you see the information on the blade there saying what it is uh, in every language imaginable. Swiss cheese knife, and at the type, uh, Schweizer Käse Messer, and then you've got it in French and Spanish, I believe, also. Uh, interesting thing about this, oops, come on. Oh, slide lock. Didn't notice it because it's red. It blends right in. But you've got the slide lock going on on the side there. But on the back side, you only have a corkscrew. 
And this was uh, the first pattern that came out. That's why it's got the large uh, white cross and the red circle. Uh, and this is done for a promotion for a cheese company. Um, you'll see the, I've, I've got a link to the video uh, below, but I've managed to find one of these that are very hard to find. You also notice it just has a toothpick, no tweezers. So it's pretty cool. Different than uh, the other uh, Victorinox 111 millimeter knives, and I was really lucky to get it. They're very difficult to find these days. You can find the later made ones that have both the uh, tweezers and the uh, toothpick, but it'll have the standard cross on it, so that's a newer one. I have one of those too, but it's not one of my favorites for the year. This is one of my favorites for the year. Another favorite for the year, this is an older knife. Um, it's the one known as Constellation. Um, I like their space knives, and you'll see some other space knives in a little bit. But you see the Victorinox symbol there, and you see the archer there because of William Tell. And then you see a Swiss Army knife on the back, the classic on the back. And this, all that says is it's one of the old classic SD limited editions from a while back. I just finally managed to get a copy of it. I wasn't collecting them when this came out. Um, but I found one in uh, near mint condition, again, for a decent price. These are the kind of knives that I don't go and spend a lot of money on. Um, I like them, but I'm not going to be the person who... Uh, has to have that one and is willing to spend a hundred bucks on it. I, I see them go that way, but not for me. Um, so that's one of the limited editions that I liked out of uh, there. These were two new ones for this year. Um, this year, I, I bought two of them. I got the one with the sardine can and then the one with the cow. I pick up all the cow ones, but to tell you the truth, um, I wasn't overly impressed with the 2018. I'm looking forward to the ones in 2019. They're going to be a whole lot cooler, I think, uh, because they're more about outdoor activities and stuff. And there's uh, one on biking, one on hiking, and one on fishing. So those three, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to buy all three of those. And then there's another cow knife that looks a whole lot better than this cow knife. So I'll be grabbing it, too. Yeah, I've got a thing for cow knives, as you can tell from this one here. My first of the Swiss Army cow knives. That one was by Wenger. Um, two from, uh, oh, here's another one. Been looking for this one for a long time, and I managed to actually get two of them. And that's the Dragonfly. Uh, this is also an older one. And this is uh, one of my favorites for the year, too. The one with the Dragonfly wings. Uh, see the wing on the back. Just really like this one and the little dragonfly. Dragonflies are my favorite insect, so uh, that's why this knife. Uh, yeah, I know it might look a little girly, but I like dragonflies, so and I really like that knife. And then uh, this was uh, by uh, uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Work came out with this one. This was the one they call the toolbox. I just sent one of these out as a gift to somebody, but... Uh, I really liked it, so I also bought one for me. Um, it was the cool thing about the limited edition knives is they, they, you know, when you're looking at the classic SDs, they're small, they don't take up much room, um, they're very collectible. Uh, yeah, I use a classic uh, on my keychain and everything, but these are like little pieces of art, so it's kind of cool and it's easy to collect and it's a, a fully functional knife, but. You know, you're not going to go broke collecting classic SDs. Well, you might if you buy them all, but uh, just one of those things. Uh, 75th anniversary for Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I'm sorry, for Smoky Bear. Big fan of Smoky Bear. Um, I like this one. It was designed by Brian Wilhoyt, but I got to tell you, um, as much as I like it, it's not one of my top five uh, Swiss Army knives for the year. Um, it's, we'll get to that in a second. We're going to move on to what you see over here. There's sets of two here. Um, and I'm going to consider these one purchase because I bought them at the same time. The autism awareness knives are really cool. I really like it. If you've got a Tinker and a Classic SD... Everyone who knows the Swiss Army knives knows exactly what comes on these. 
Uh, the Tinker is the version that has the can opener, which uh, can opener. You see why I um, end up doing so many things where I have edits all over the place on my videos? This is not a can opener, folks. This is known as a Phillips screwdriver. Um, we're talking mistakes galore here. Uh, so Phillips screwdriver and your punch on the back, also known as a sewing eye and reamer blade. Um, can opener, that's the can opener. This is the screwdriver. Um, bottle opener, screwdriver, and main blade, and then a secondary blade. That's what the tinker will always have. Um, the autism awareness knife, just because of uh, knowing uh, people who have who deal with autism and also everything else, this is one of my favorite knives of the year. I'm putting it together with this one, so I'm counting this as just one. Um, I had to have both, but normally I would have picked one or the other. Uh, but that's how much uh, this one meant to me. Uh, I bought this with a uh, gift card from my daughter, and these came out of Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So these just uh, recently showed up in November. And back, back in July, well, everyone is aware of this one, the, uh, the Moonshot, uh, 50th anniversary of the landing on the moon. And uh, these were put out by a Swiss knife shop. Um, I believe they're still available too, which is kind of cool. So if you're, if you're interested in it, these would be a couple to consider buying. And I think these actually look better than the one that came out officially from uh, Victorinox. Uh, and they are definitely a lot cheaper than the ones from Victorinox. They only made 1,969 of them. They were all tinkers. Uh, they all sold out within hours of them releasing it. And they're on the secondary market now going from between $3,000 and $1,000. Um, these on the secondary market, well, they're not even there yet because I believe they're still available through Swiss Knife Shop. Uh, and really nice picture of the man on the moon and a shot of the earth from the moon. So I'm really cool with these knives. I, I really like these too. Uh, so, my top five Swiss Army knives for the year, um, like I mentioned, the Kaza Messer up here, and then the Moonshot knives, the Autism Awareness knives. Um, I know it didn't come out this year, but for me, this one is a big deal, so I'm going with this one also. Um, I should just do one with uh, for my classic SDs, my favorite classic SDs. And then the Dragonfly. Um, those are the, the five that, you know, really uh, I had the most excitement over. Are they the most valuable? Probably not. Well, this one will, will probably increase in value. These will all increase a little bit in value. But um, knives like this... The, the soldiers' knives are going to go up in value much better than these will back here. Uh, and But it isn't always about value. Um, it's just about what I particularly like. And um, those are the ones that I really, really liked. And those are the ones that, if you see the video, you'll see that I was more excited about these knives than some of the other knives. Um, but there you go for my five Swiss Army knives, and then uh, five kind of offbeat, well, not offbeat knives, five other knives that I was pretty excited about this year, which were the uh, Dragonfly 2, the uh, second uh, edition of the Boy Scout, uh, official Boy Scout knife from um, around 1917, 1924, the 5.5 inch large toothpick by Case, the uh, USAF uh, utility knife, and finally the really funky fish priest with the knife blade on the inside. And I believe this is stainless steel. Any case, um, and the knife I'll be carrying today, right here, my Victorinox Woodsman, along with my Dragonfly. Those are my pocket carries for today. This one for sentimental reasons. It's an old uh, Christmas present. Second knife that I 
got as a Christmas present, to be exact. The first one was my K-Bar. I don't think I can legally walk around with a 7-inch uh, fixed blade, uh, well, a 12 and a half, well, 12 inch fi fixed blade strapped to my leg on Christmas Eve. So I'm not going to do that, but I can throw the woodsman in my pocket along with my dragonfly. So that's what I'll be carrying today. And those are some of my favorites uh, for the year. Uh, hope to be back in a couple days and I will try and look at uh, five pretty cool fixed blades that I picked up this year that uh, I thought I'd share with you. Any case, I'm going to let you go now. You guys uh, have a great Christmas. Uh, looking forward to talking to you more in the new year. Thank you very much for your support of my channel this year. And uh, hope to see you still uh, hanging around next year. And don't forget, there will be that uh, giveaway announcement uh, soon after the new year for the uh, sod buster that's in this box right now. Um, again, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and I will see you soon.